Hi, in this tutorial, I will tell you how to create a basic presentation using LibreOffice Impress. LibreOffice Impress is uh, similar to Microsoft PowerPoint, although it is difficult to have a feature-by-feature -feature comparison. There are many things that you can do in PowerPoint that um, are difficult to do in Impress, while there are many things in Impress that are much more convenient when you compare it with PowerPoint. So this is uh, an open source software and it is available for free and a very capable software to create wonderful presentations as an alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's start. So when you start uh, LibreOffice, uh, this is what you see after installation. I'm using LibreOffice 7, which is as of August 2020, the latest version. So when you start LibreOffice, you can actually see all the softwares that you can access um, and I'm going to choose impress so when you start impress for the first time this is what you see and impress offers you immediately with a number of templates so you can click on any one of these and open them if you wanted to if uh, there was something to your liking otherwise um, you can just simply cancel this and start with a blank presentation, which is something that I'm going to do. Now, before I actually uh, start uh, creating this presentation, it is possible that many people might find this kind of an interface different from PowerPoint, but you can actually create a tabbed interface very easily, which is very similar to PowerPoint by going to view and then going to user interface and then just simply choosing tabbed. So this is view and then user interface and choosing tabbed. So the moment you do this, you have now a tabbed interface. Okay. And you still have access to this menu. So if you don't want to have this menu bar also, you can just click this button here and this can hide the menu and you all you have now is just tabbed interface uh, the first one is file the second one is home insert layout slideshow very similar to powerpoint so if people are familiar with tabbed interface they can quite easily reorient the interface uh, to have libreoffice impress look like powerpoint so i am using birding as an example and I will try to create commonly used slides in business presentations and some simple animations. So um, the effort is to have uh, one slide of every variety. So let me just first start by giving a title. And when you click on this box, it turns into an object that can actually be moved. So you can just simply click on it as you move these guidelines become available and visible such that you can position and center your um, object now this is visible by going to view and switching help lines while moving on so you can just click on it and if it is not blue then you can click on it one more time and this will then become visible so this is the title and you delete this click on it once the border becomes visible with um, the small point anchors and you can move your object to the center or wherever you want okay Next is, I'm going to introduce a new slide. So you can introduce a new slide in two ways. Right click and put in a new slide or press Ctrl M or otherwise just come here and create a new page or a new slide. And you have a number of layouts that are available. So I'm going to choose title and content. So this is the most common slide that uh, people make in PowerPoint presentations. They have a title and they have some content to follow. So I'm going to create a first text slide and call it what is burden. Okay. 
come into my content area and I really don't want this bullet point or maybe yes so I can switch it off from here or on from here and let me type So I can keep typing and as I press enter I am on a new bullet point and I can add another point. So you can actually keep uh, working like this. Uh, just click once to move this a little in the center or to the left or right. And then click back once again to lose it. So this is how you can create a, a slide with bullet points. So this is a very common slide. If you wanted to add a line or something, you can just come to insert and pick up a line, press shift and create a straight line. So as you move your mouse forward, keep shift pressed and you are, you are going to have a straight line. So you can um, add shapes etc. So this is how you can create a simple bulleted text slide. Next up, uh, let me insert a new slide so I'm going to press Control M as I told you before so the layout of the new slide is identical to the layout of the previously created slide so if you created a blank slide previously uh, Control M or new slide is going to create uh, a, a blank slide so let me just come here and say what do you need for birding? Now while we can create a, a similar text slide, I would much rather prefer um, showing this using uh, a diagram. Uh, in PowerPoint, this is called a smart art and you can easily create smart arts in PowerPoint, but the same can also be done in um, LibreOffice. So let me get rid of uh, this box here and then I'm going to come to insert and I'm going to choose gallery. Okay, so this is also available from this sidebar. So if you can come here and open this sidebar, you can choose the gallery from here itself. So either from insert gallery or this button here gallery, both of them mean the same thing. Just click Or click here and you're going to get the same thing so I'm going to choose diagrams and there are a lot of diagrams that I can pick up from so let me just go down and see if I can find something appropriate I can increase this a bit just to make sure that whatever I'm seeing is properly visible let me pick up this and I can just come here drag and drop it so that's just about it. So the sidebar is a very handy feature and when you are working you can just uh, hide it and when you are wanting to use one of these features you can open it. So this is available and accessible to you. The same is also available, uh, is also true for uh, the slides here. You can have your, the full area to work with. Uh, on this particular slide or otherwise you can have your other slides also visible in this pane on the left. So let me just come here and say let me put a question mark and then the first thing that I need is probably a binocular 
so all you need to do is just type and I need a small book to identify birds I definitely need a water bottle to quench my thirst as I walk outdoors and maybe a camera to photograph birds so as you can see um, when you click you can actually move this now one important thing is that if you wanted to reduce the size of this diagram uh, you need to actually select the whole thing uh, this is a little bit different from PowerPoint because in PowerPoint you can click and you can have the whole diagram selected as one single unit here you have to just go and draw a rectangle around the entire figure so the entire diagram becomes selected and then you can make it smaller or bigger okay so you can actually change the size of this diagram by just simply selecting the whole thing and then using the corner handles to increase or decrease also what you can do is to click on any individual shape and fill it with a different color so it is really very simple to do this here just come and fill it with a different color and right here I'm going to choose another color so you can change the, the color of uh, each object individually and then position it, center it, whatever you want to do with it. It is visual and it is much much more easy to uh, communicate with uh, the people who are attending the presentation so wherever possible if you can avoid uh, having text bullet points and convert them into a diagram it's very desirable so just want to point out that when you are on a particular tab you have quite a few options available right from the tab itself but uh, at the end of the tab uh, you will find many more options that are might not be visible on the tab itself available from you know this little drop down so if you are on the insert tab you can if you're not finding something you can always come here and click and it is possible that you will be able to see those things here for example header and footer and page count and page number many of these things are available directly from this particular little drop down and the same is available so if you are on layout you can always come here and click and have more options available from this little menu likewise same for slideshow and so on and so forth so most of the common ones are available on the tab itself okay so let me just come down here and let us uh, insert a new um, slide so let me just press do it using the third option so come down here and press new slide now uh, in this slide I want to have uh, an image so let me just say what kind of binocular there are many times when you actually need to insert an image and you can quite easily do so by just simply choosing uh, an option there are four options here on this slide one is image one is audio or video one is a chart and one is a table so we can click on this or we can come here insert and choose an image either one of them will work let me just click on this and I can just simply go and pick up a particular image so let me just choose this image so I can then position this particular image I always recommend that images should be expanded or uh, condensed using the corner handles such that the aspect of the original image is never destroyed 
so you can insert an image quite easily using insert an image and when you click on an image you have a few tools that are available to you so say for example if you wanted to crop the image so these are contextual tools so when you click on a particular item uh, for example when you click on a photo uh, then the image tools will become available to you so you have contrast and you have brightness and you have filters and so on and so forth you can experiment with some of these and you can also have a border for example so you uh, this uh, particular image can have a border from here or you can choose to not have a border and if you wanted to crop you can crop this image so just click on the crop tool and you can just simply crop this particular image just move these handles and then uh, press enter enter so the image will get cropped so you can just click on it here and you can also compress an image so if you have say for example uh, copied an image from the internet and uh, usually these images are pretty large so you can just click on it and make it into jpj quality image and thereby reducing the size of the image so it'll it shows you the original size and it will also tell you this is the original size and when you calculate the new size it will tell you what is the the size and uh, you can see here uh, I mentioned about uh, uh, Kiwi bytes so you can see that terminology in action right here so um, if you increase uh, the size will change increase the quality if you decrease the quality the size is going to change so this is itself a jpg image so nothing much is actually um, uh, visible here in fact it's becoming bigger but then you can actually compress an image using this particular tool so when you click on an image these tools will become available to you and you can also replace this image with something else so you can explore some of these uh, tools right here uh, you can bring an image forward so if for example or send it backward so if you have some text over here and you want that text to appear on top of the image you can just simply send the image back or bring the text forward whatever is the case so this is one thing that is very commonly used to you know um, put an image let me insert another image so I'm just going to click here and click on image I just want to indicate that this is uh, a choice that I want people to make. So I have a small image of a right symbol. So to see how the slide looks, you can just simply click anywhere in the slide and you have two options. So you can start the presentation from the first slide or otherwise you can start the presentation from the current slide so I just want to see how this slide looks so I will just click this one and so as you can see uh, immediately uh, there is a, a figure and my right symbol is saying that this is the one that you should actually be buying now sometimes I actually want to animate this so I can just click on the object that I want to animate and I can just open this and click on animate and you you will see here that this becomes gray so you have to make or choose the object that you want to animate and then choose the plus sign so you will see that the animation has appeared here it is entrance and the effect is appear and this object is going to appear on click you can choose to have it with previous or after previous um, and you can have a large number of effects that you can actually choose from if you are not happy with appear so I will just keep appear here and you can play and see how this will work you can also click on automatic preview so the moment an animation is applied it will show you how it is going to look like so let me just see how the slide has changed with this animation I'm going to click on the slide and then start from the current slide so in this version uh, the the right symbol is not visible and when I click on it 
it becomes visible because I have created an animation. So this is one common animation that you can actually employ. Likewise, if we go back here and see how this slide looks, you will notice that this is not progression and all the material that I want to communicate to my audience is appearing at uh, the same time. So one very common animation that is applied to text is progression. So all you have to do is to just simply click on this text, text box and choose it and then just simply come here and add this animation. Make sure that the animation pane is visible uh, via this star icon and choose your object which I have already chosen by clicking once. You must see these guide anchor points visible and then just click on add animation. You can remove an animation from here so that animation has gone. Uh, in this particular case, I want to put the animation, so I want to click on it. And this is on click. So this basically means that don't show everything at the same time. As I keep clicking, the point should appear one by one. Let us see how this looks now and start from the current slide. So as you can see, the text is not visible any longer. And you can click on this and the first point becomes available. Then you click again and the second point becomes visible and so in this particular manner you can make sure that uh, the audience is not flooded with a lot of information what you can also do is that when you are actually when you have chosen this particular object uh, you can right click on it and have options like effect options so if i do this uh, i have an option that says very similar to powerpoint completely similar to powerpoint and what I can do is instead of saying don't dim, I can say dim with color. And I can choose to have this particular uh, point dimming after I have uh, shown it such that the focus is on the next point. So this is an interesting technique. So you can just click on it. And so I'm talking about this first point and when I click and move on to my next point um, this second point is in the normal color and the first point is actually dimmed using uh, because we have um, made sure that it is shown in another color so the focus remains on the first point while the second point is also visible so you can do this by just simply choosing uh, this box going to entrance the animation that we had applied right click and choosing effect options and then instead of choosing the default don't dim just change it to dim with color and choose a particular color and press ok so this is how you can deploy simple animations to slides so to conclude this part let me just show you one more small thing let us say for example as we move ahead we need one more slide of this type what I can do is I can right click I can choose this slide right click on it and duplicate this slide so in this particular case this as an exact copy of the same slide a new slide has been created and then I can just simply drag and move it to the end and dump it here or alternatively um, if I can just go back here, what I can do is to go to view and choose the slide sorter view. So when I do this, I see all my slides and I can just catch hold of my slide, drag it and bring it to the exact position where I want this new slide to appear. So view and slide sorter view and we can always go back to our normal view, which is the editing mode view. So you can just come back here. Uh, but slide sort of view is a great place where you can actually rejuggle and move your slides if you wanted to have them in a different order. So you can try this out yourself as well. You can also have a notes view. So what notes do for you is that they open underneath the slide a small place where you can add additional material that you can use at the time of speaking. So you can just say for example to remind participants of your presentation about the fact 
that birds are hidden in thick foliage and therefore cannot be seen easily um, and anything else that you want to you know supplement your slide with that you don't want to put on the slide but want to speak so it could come from wikipedia so you could just get a text extract from there and paste it here but then this is what can actually be visible to you even if you are traveling you can actually take a printout of these slides and have research on every particular slide available to you this notes part is not visible to um, uh, to to the viewer of the presentation so this is just for the speaker of the presentation many times we actually are trying to explain a complicated diagram and we have done some research to uh, understand what exactly the diagram is all about so we can put all that research here so that we ourselves the speakers can actually be reminded of uh, this particular uh, slide you can then come here on the next slide and mention that some other things are less important like a cap an umbrella a food packet a first aid box etc so you can have notes for each one of the slides that you can actually use or reminded of be reminded of at the time of speaking so coming back uh, we are here and we can go back to a normal view and this duplication of this slide makes my life easier because I can now easily say for example if I wanted to talk about a particular bird now so and if this bird was peafowl I could just uh, come back here and give its zoological or scientific name mention that it is the national bird of India mythical bird with many references in different cultures and religions etc etc so I can keep adding here and uh, let me just see how this works so it is actually carrying forward that particular uh, thing um, the animation except for the last point so let me just try to repair this so I'll just open my animation tab I can click on this and remove it and I can come here and add it once again and right click effect options and dim with color and then just simply come here and choose a, a gray color which I had chosen before and I think this has been repaired so if I start from this slide and I can see this then this is how it can actually work so this is how we can duplicate any slide and bring it and then move it around using the view and slide sort of view we can add notes to any particular um, slide for uh, the speaker to you know kind of use at the time of speaking so when you present uh, this uh, presentation on a big screen or on two screens you will actually see the notes that the uh, that the viewers of your presentation will not and you can add extra points so these are really handy so this concludes part one and we will continue with part two and have different uh, kinds of slides uh, adding on to this particular presentation.